working to connect a region of over 600 new bridges between our lands. Welcome to ASEAN in Focus. I'm Marikar Velasco delivering to you the latest news in and around the ASEAN region. On today's headlines. The annual Balikatan exercises between the Philippines and the United States has helped maintain stability in the Pacific region. The pace of the Philippines' economic expansion will be slowed by the delay in the passage of the 2019 budget and the impact of El Nino on food supply the World Bank said on Monday. Six baby elephants separated from their parents and trapped in a muddy pit for days have been rescued by park rangers in rural Thailand. The annual Balikatan exercises between the Philippines and the United States has helped maintain stability in the Pacific region. Exercise Balikatan has become one of the premier military training events in the Pacific Hemisphere and has helped us to maintain regional stability, uphold international norms, combat violent extremism, alleviate human suffering, and much more. This according to U.S. Marine Corps Brigadier General Christopher McPhillips, who is also the American Exercise Director for the Annual Military Maneuvers. This year's Balikatan exercises formally opened in the ceremony at the AFP Commissioned Officers Club at Camp Aguinaldo, Quezon City, Monday. Balikatan, which means shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder in Filipino, symbolizes the partnership between the armed forces of the Philippines and U.S. forces. Around 4,000 Filipinos and 3,500 American troops will be taking part in the exercises, which will run from April 1 to 12. The exercise also includes the participation of 50 members of the Australian Defence Force for humanitarian and civic assistance projects and Special Operations Forces training. Philippine, Philippine and U.S. forces will conduct counter-terrorism training, amphibious operations, live fire training, urban operations training, aviation operations, bilateral planning, subject matter expert exchanges, and humanitarian and civic assistance projects throughout Luzon. It links us together on a personal level, fortifying friendships and building camaraderie from the lowest levels up through the leadership ranks. Authorities caution Filipino travelers to be wary of recruiters targeting victims to become drug mules on international flights. In a press briefing, the National Bureau of Investigation presented three suspects who were arrested in operations in Pasay City and Pasig City for attempting to ship out 3.297 kilograms of cocaine in cover pages of children's books destined for Bangkok, Thailand. The suspects were identified as Ma Clara Bedico, Alvin Avila, and Antoinette Mendiola. Bedico and Avila, who were recruited by Mendiola, were arrested last March 28 at a fast food restaurant at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport with five sealed children's books in their luggage. Cursory inspection showed that powdery substance, later confirmed to be cocaine, were stuffed on the inner portion of the hardbound covers of the book. The books were in Spanish and seemed to be published for small children. The NBI said members of the Western African Drug Syndicate through their Filipina partners recruit women to be couriers through work abroad schemes posted on Facebook. Emeterio Dongalio Jr., Chief NBI Special Action Unit, said the mo modus operandi of the drug smuggler seemed to be or seemed to be to take advantage of the country's visa-free entry to Thailand. 
Dongalo placed the estimated street value of the contraband at around 30 to 45 million pesos. Government figures, however, have placed the street value of the cocaine at a little over 5,000 pesos per gram or just over 15 million pesos for 3 kilograms. A Vietnamese woman accused of assassinating the North Korean leader's half-brother is to walk free after Malaysia dropped murder charges against her. The 2017 killing of Kim Jong-nam with a toxic nerve agent at Kuala Lumpur Airport shocked the world, but Duan Thi Huang's guilty plea to the lesser charge of causing injury makes her the only person convicted in the case. Watch this. Boeing must perform more work on the proposed fixed to its 737 MAX aircraft before it can be submitted for review, U.S. officials said Monday, suggesting the planes could stay grounded a while longer. A Federal Aviation Administration spokesman said in a statement, additional work is needed to ensure that Boeing has identified and appropriately addressed all pertinent issues. He added the FAA will not approve the software for installation until the agency is satisfied with the submission. The FAA statement is the bureaucratic equivalent of a stop sign after Boeing officials touted their proposed remedy last week during a media tour at the company's manufacturing plant in Seattle, Washington. Boeing 737 MAX planes were grounded globally last month following the second of two deadly crashes to occur in less than five months. Scrutiny has centered on an anti-stall system developed specifically for the planes that has given pilots problems. A preliminary report into the second calamity, the March 10 crash of a Boeing 737 MAX 8 that killed 157 people, will likely be issued this week, the Ethiopian government said Monday. Boeing last week gathered hundreds of pilots and reporters at its Brenton, Washington manufacturing site for a presentation on proposed changes to the maneuvering's characteristics augmentation system, which is believed to have been a key factor in the Ethiopian crash and in an October crash of a Lion Air in Indonesia that killed 189 people. Among the changes, the MCAs will, not, will no longer repeat make, or repeatedly make corrections when the pilot tries to regain control and will automatically disconnect in the event of disagreements between the two angle of attack or AOA sensors, the company said last week. White sandy beaches that stay cool to touch even on the hottest summer days. Blue green ocean waves and the warm ocean breeze. There's no wonder why Dr. Beach is named Siesta Key, Florida, the number one beach in the United States. Don't forget to watch episodes of Digital Next every Tuesday and Thursday at 7:30 p.m. I'm Melissa Protest, coming to you from Siesta Key, Florida, and I am one with 25.
Union and the United States reaffirmed their enduring ties and explored ways to deepen the strategic partnership at the 32nd ASEAN-U.S. Dialogue held in Washington, D.C. Senior officials attending the dialogue took stock of the growing cooperation over the past four decades and agreed to explore new opportunities to further strengthen and deepen collaboration. ASEAN-U.S. cooperation has grown to cover a wide spectrum of areas through several new initiatives as guided by the ASEAN-U.S. Plan of Action 2016-2020. The meeting underscored the importance of cooperation in such areas as terrorism, trafficking in persons and other transnational crime, maritime security, cybersecurity, good governance and transparency, digital connectivity, ICT, smart cities, trade and investment, energy, infrastructure, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, education, women and youth. The contribution of the Lower Mekong Initiative, which is at its 10th year in addressing sub-regional development, was also acknowledged by both sides. ASEAN and the U.S. engaged in a discussion on regional and international developments, including Indo-Pacific cooperation, the Korean Peninsula and maritime security issues. ASEAN welcomed the U.S. continued commitment to the region and support for ASEAN centrality in the regional architecture under the free and open Indo-Pacific strategy focusing on infrastructure, energy, and digital technology. The pace of the country's economic expansion will be slowed by the delay in the passage of the 2019 budget and the impact of El Nino on food supply, the World Bank said on Monday. The economic headwinds facing the country prompted the World Bank to revise downward its GDP forecast for the Philippines for 2019, 2020 and 2021. The Washington-based lender estimated Philippine GDP growth for 2019 at 6.4% and 6.5% for 2020 and 2021. It initially projected that economic expansion will be at 6.5% this year and 6.6% in 2020 and 2021. World Bank senior economist Wong Kian told reporters in a press briefing the delay in approving the 2019 budget and the re pre-election spending ban on new public construction projects are expected to slow down public investment spending in the first half of the year, but the latter is expected to recover toward the second half of 2019, assuming that the budget gets approved very soon. Kian added, export growth is likely to remain weak as global growth and trade activities are projected to moderate in the medium term. She said a reenacted budget means no new programs and projects will receive funding. This will cut government spending, a key driver of the Philippine economy. The Duterte administration is keen on spending around 7 trillion pesos to 8 trillion pesos on various infrastructure projects in the medium term. The budget will finance 75 flagship projects and over 4,000 projects identified in the public investment program until 2022. Adding pressure to the economy, Kian said, is El Nino, as this could cut food supply and lead to higher inflation. She said this does not bode well for the poor, as they usually bear the brunt of higher commodity prices. Kian said an intensified El Nino may lead to food supply constraints, affecting the poor and vulnerable the most, as they are spending a relatively larger proportion of their income in food. For instance, last year when food prices reached 5.2% on average, people from the first quintile of the poorest 20% of the population faced 6.2% with over 60% of that driven by food inflation. Earlier, UP School of Statistics Dean Dennis Mapa said the increase in food inflation, especially for the poorest 30%, reached 7.1% last year. The Philippines is poised to export more agricultural products to Russia as the two countries have agreed to increase the volume of bilateral trade. Agriculture Secretary Manuel Pinol visited Russia and Belarus to promote Philippine agricultural products. Our EBC Russia correspondent Emi Coloma reports from Moscow. 
The Philippines is poised to export more agricultural products to Russia as the two countries have agreed to increase the volume of bilateral trade during a recent meeting with the delegates of Russia and Philippines Agricultural Cooperation. Agriculture Secretary Manuel Piñol visited here in Russia and Belarus to promote Philippine agricultural products. The ambassador has emphasized that this is a 180 million Limana market. And our gateway to this market is Russia. So uh, if we're able to establish uh, our good relations with Russia, uh, you know, we're opening up a totally new market. The Department of Agriculture urged the possibility of bringing the local Guimaras mangoes, coconut products, and pineapple beets, along with the fisheries products, to the Russian markets. So, yan, uh, coconut, manga, and then we're coming back uh, in uh, June of this year. We're joining, we're joining the uh, Belarus uh, Agro Festival, uh, and we'll be bringing a lot of, uh, of uh, big players, tuna industry, sardines, uh, coconut, uh, our fruits, bananas, pineapple, and all the other products that, uh, that uh, we will offer this uh, market. We're also joining the uh, September uh, World Food, World Food, World Food uh, Expo uh, here in Moscow. And, um, okay. and the ambassador here was telling me that uh, there's a company here uh, interested in uh, buying uh, our Dimaras Mango. And I called up uh, Director Remelio uh, Dicoher of uh, UB today, and I just received uh, feedback from the ambassador. By next week, available six metric tons. Uh, the week, from the months, the week after that, another five metric tons. Uh, they are looking at uh, investing in uh, banana farming, or rather uh, pineapple farming, because they have heard that uh, Philippine pineapples are uh, now considered as the best in the world. Uh, they are looking at uh, our uh, tuna industry. Mm -hmm. They would like to order some uh, canned tunas. Uh, we are offering them uh, uh, shrimps. Secretary Manny Piñol is confident that it will be of great help to the Philippine agriculture sector if it opens a new market in Europe. He also presented the banana tuna fishing and fishing boats industries and a search for fertilizer to the agricultural agency in the Russian government. Secretary Piñol wants the agriculture in Mindanao to benefit first during this mission in Russia. Actually, Sanuma, uh... We regret that uh, we did not discover this market for so long. We regret that uh, we uh, have neglected this uh, market for so long. And uh, we appreciate the efforts of uh, Ambassador Soberta who uh, persistently uh, and uh, steadfastly uh, facilitating our endeavors to uh, have access to this market. Siya lang yung naniwala natin dati, wala naniwala sa kanya. Pero may naiwan na kami. It's a huge market. No? 180 million. Can you imagine that? Meanwhile, Russian companies are reportedly keen on exporting grains such as wheat and the improvement of Philippine fishing boats. Russia in the coming years will become one of the leaders of the world agricultural market and one of the biggest grain exporters shipping over 40 million tons of grains even year to different countries. According to DRRM Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Operations Center of the Department of Agriculture, the Philippines is losing more than 1 billion pesos because of continuing drought. We cannot, you cannot, we cannot stop El Nino. If, if people think that uh, I, I can't do something uh, uh, to, uh, you know, to lessen the impact of El Nino on the farmers, it is impossible. Mm -hmm. So, ang, ang unang recommendation ko doon during the water summit, number one, sabi ko, let's face the fact, we are losing some of our headwaters. So, my number one recommendation as BA Secretary to address the water problem in the country, which of course will address El Nino also. Number one, we have to uh, identify the uh, headwaters of the country and declare this as protected areas, not just, uh, not just symbolic uh, declaration. Mm -hmm. but uh, protected areas which will really be protected by forest rangers and nobody could nobody should touch the headwaters
because if you drive the major vehicle systems, then you will uh, actually deepen it and uh, enlarge its capacity to hold water. We shouldn't be afraid of El Nino. Mm -hmm. He hopes to bring huge investments the Philippines during this series of talks with the Russian and Belarusian governments. From Moscow, Russia, this is Amy Coloma and I am one with 25. Teacher Sally, and this is Kid Cuento, one of Net 25 Kids online shows. Kid Cuento is now on TV. You can watch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4 to 4 30 p.m. Also, watch Anong Senyo with Ate DJ every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 to 4 30 p.m. Sa Kid Cuento, ang aming motto ay Let's all read to succeed. Hooray! Kita kita tayo ha. Bye bye. Welcome back. Different environmental groups gathered in Circuit Makati last Saturday for the Earth Hour 2019. Let's look at some of the highlights. Here's Erlo Bring Us. Millions of people all over the world, especially Filipinos, unite to join the yearly 60 mini blackout or Earth Hour to make a largest call for action on climate change. With the threats of plastic, pollution, and loss of nature plaguing the planet, thousands gathered at circuit events grounds in Makati to participate in the worldwide fund for nature Philippines Earth Hour switch off event. Everyone from all over the Philippines turn off their non-essential lights to support in solidarity with millions around the world who will do the same. Filipino scouts also grace the event to support action to be a responsible in environment. Siguro po, ito yung pinakamalaking dapat natin gawin sa community natin, sa environment natin. It will be a big help. It, it, it looks simple but there will be a big impact towards to, our, to this kind of event. Po. Parang it has a big impact that is very helpful. For instance, this year Earth Hour campaign in the Philippines also focused on threat of plastic pollution with WWF Philippines saying that they have to create awareness on the dangers of single-use plastic and to influence policy. With the Worldwide Fund for Nature Philippines, hashtag Ayoko ng Plastic Movement, the group encourages the Filipinos to less their old habit of using single-use plastics and switch to eco-friendlier alternatives. Ang WWF uh, may apat na tema na tinitingnan, no? yung mga issues on food, so about uh, sustainable uh, food production, like sustainable agriculture. May trabaho rin kami tungkol sa tubig, so water and watersheds. May programa kami dyan. At may programa kami sa climate and energy, na hawak ko. Tapos mayroon kami pinapalagaan ng mga wildlife. Yun po. WWF Philippines President and Chief Executive Officer, Joel Palma, reiterated the significance of collaborative effort to achieve a long-term solution to this environmental problem. Since the first symbolic lights out event in Sydney in 2007, Earth Hour has grown into world's largest grassroots movement for the environment. Earth Hour campaign is now on its 12th year. It is also a platform to raise awareness on the importance of biodiversity. Kaichiro can do their part, no? Uh, can, can, can pledge and, and make a difference. Kaya, uh, this is something that we can do personally and have a great impact on the planet. Sa lahat, tayong lahat magsama-sama. Uh, we are all inclusive. Isa lang ang gusto natin mangyari. Magkaroon tayo ng magandang kinabukasan ng ating mga kabataan. To power the use of social media last Saturday, they invite all to use the hashtags, hashtags connect to earth, hashtags earth hour ph 2019, and hashtag ayoko ng plastic when posting their pictures and stories online. These hashtags is to promote sustainable living actions and plastic-free lifestyle. 
Many government organizations also have the Office of the President send their support in this big grassroots activity for the nature. WWF Philippines also thanks to all youth groups based on events, especially the Filipino scouts and different schools in many groups that support this grassroots movement for the nature. Well, unang-una, masaya kami, syempre, nagpapasalamat kami sa kanila at umaasa kami na talagang gagawin nila yung mga bagay na makikita nila na pwede nilang gawin. Almost 12,000 local and national landmarks all over the world in 7,000 cities and 188 countries yearly support and join the yearly Earth Hour of the worldwide grassroots activity for the nature. Papasalamat kami for all who participated in Earth Hour and ang talagang objective natin dito is maging how do we, you know, a practice doing beyond the hour yung makakatulong sa ating environment. Maka lahok kayo dito, hindi lang to parang ipang isang oras lang. Ang ang mensahe ng Earth Hour is really to go beyond the hour. Ano pwede mong gawin para sa planeta kada araw? Earth Hour 2019 activity also highlights in many landmarks in different countries. Like in Europe. Hey, Also in Middle East and countries in Asia. According to the Worldwide Fund Philippines, they will make another and many more campaigns to help and to save our nature and to serve Mother Earth. Reporting here at Makati City for Eagle News, I'm Erlo Bringas, I'm 1 with 25. Yeah. Six baby elephants separated from their parents and trapped in a muddy pit for days have been rescued by park rangers in rural Thailand. Take a look. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nation. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I'm Marika Velasco and I am one with 25.